through the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10-2. I'm David Lovejoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Rhonda Lonert. And I'm Chuck Alicious, Chuck Williams. Uh, you'd be surprised the number of people who live with chronic pain in our world. Uh, it, it is almost an epidemic proportion. Everything from injuries, uh, from recreational sports, from work injuries, uh, to just your body's beat up and worn out and tired. Uh, chronic pain is something a lot of people face. Today, we're joined by Dr. Jenna Lane. She's with Advanced Pain Care. We're going to address the issue of how to deal with chronic pain. Good morning, doctor. How are you doing today? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Doctor, I guess my question to you is simply, who should come to Advanced Pain Care? A great question. The vast majority, the number one complaint that we see is patients with chronic lower back pain. Oh. Um, and so that's the number one complaint we see. Um, we also see a lot of patients with neck pain. We see a lot of patients with joint pain, so pain in the knees, pain in the hips, pain in the shoulders. Um, we also see uh, some abdominal pain, um, some pelvic pain. I've even treated a few patients um, with pain during pregnancy. So really, any pain complaint, um, headaches, migraines, um, we kind of see it all. Well, if you have any of these issues that you just uh, mentioned, when we come to see you, what kind of treatments can we expect? What does this look like? So <clears throat> when we first see you, we'll see you in the clinic and, um, you know, we'll do a, um, we'll talk to you for a while. We'll do a physical exam. We might review imaging and look at other labs and then come up with a game plan. Um, the uh, most common procedure I do um, is called an epidural steroid injection, um, which helps with either low back pain or neck pain. Um, and it, it gives several months of good pain relief. And if it's something that works for you, it's something we can repeat a couple times a year to keep your pain at bay. Um, we also do uh, procedures called radiofrequency ablation. That goes by a lot of different names. People call it nerve burning, rhizotomy, nerve ablation. Um, it helps with arthritis in the spine, um, which gives a lot of people chronic lower back pain, neck pain, mid back pain. Um, and we do a, a lot of uh, spinal cord stimulation as well. That is a bit more invasive than the other injections we do, but when you're comparing it to something like spine surgery, it's a lot less invasive with less recovery. And um, a lot of our patients have great success with spinal cord stimulation. Um, that is something that's been around for decades. It's been around since the 80s. It's really become quite sophisticated though in the last five years or so. Um, and so we treat patients with lower back pain, neck pain, even some peripheral neuropathy or um, uh, complex regional pain syndrome. Um, there's, there, it's becoming um, a technology that we're using more and more often just because of the success we see in our patients. Doctor, let me ask you this. Why is it important to find someone who specializes in pain? I know some people who've gone through this issue they don't feel like they've been heard or their questions have been asked properly. Uh, why is it important to go to someone and a physician like yourself who deals with chronic pain or pain on a regular basis? Uh, that's another great question. Um, so when you're seeing a, a board certified interventional pain specialist, they're trained to look at kind of the whole picture in regards to your pain. So when, when you're dealing with someone with chronic pain, that's different than pain that, that happened, you know, two days ago. You have to treat that completely differently. Um, so, and it's not that we can prescribe one medication or do one injection and then solve your pain. And I wish that were the case, but typically that's not. We have to look at it for multiple different avenues. So it, we call that a multidisciplinary approach. Um, we're doing things like injections, sometimes medications, sometimes we're wanting you to see a physical therapist or sometimes even a cognitive behavioral therapist because when you're having chronic pain, that's going to affect your mood, that's going to cause depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms, and the worse that is, the worse your pain is, and it can become a vicious cycle. You can't have chronic pain without it um, affecting your mood. Uh, so we Whoa. really have to look at it 
not just from, oh, I wish I, you know, we'll burn this nerve and I wish it were that simple, but we really have to look at it um, from a, a more um, rounded um, way. And, and patients who feel like they haven't been heard, that is something I see very commonly. That happens more often in women. Um, so there's been studies that show that women, when they, when they complain of pain, they're more likely to be treated for anxiety rather than treating the pain. Wow. Um, Whoa. And so, you know, that's something I see commonly um, with my female patients. They just feel like nobody's listening to them or nobody believes their pain because they had imaging or something and they say, well, nothing's wrong with you. We don't know why you're in pain. Um, and so I see that. I see that quite commonly. Uh, you know, it strikes me what you said was very true. It seems like the the further you go with the, with the pain care, it affects your mood 100%. There's no two ways around that, is there? No, there's no. You, it, and pain is a, is a, a stimuli that um, is unpleasant. Right. And so you can't have pain without it affecting your mood. Those those two things can't can occur um, not together. They always occur together. So Whoa. chronic pain is going to affect your mood. Oh, that's why I'm so grumpy. <laughs> we, we just had a lot answered right there. Um, my question is this, how, how much of what you see is brought about by lifestyle of your, of your patients? And you mentioned the whole picture you know, a cognitive behavioral specialist, uh, physical therapy. Uh, do you approach diet and nutrition and things like that as well? Personally, I I don't um, address diet and nutrition. Um, you know, that's something I would defer to their primary care physician. Um, as far as lifestyle changes, the biggest thing you can do to prevent chronic pain or to help treat it is to quit smoking. Um, so smoking affects the small blood vessels, and when those become atherosclerotic, uh, your, the discs uh, between your vertebrae aren't getting blood flow, and they can become dehydrated. And it can also make your bones soft, make you more prone to fractures. Um, and so smoking is the biggest thing. As far as weight, that can become a catch-22 situation. I see lots of thin patients. In chronic pain, I see lots of overweight patients in chronic pain. I, I, I wouldn't ever imply that somebody's weight is the sole cause of their pain. Um, once you start to have pain, it becomes more difficult to do things like exercise and to be active. Mm -hmm. And the, the less you're active, the worse your pain is. And so it just that's another thing that becomes a vicious cycle. Um, but you know we have we have a lot of tricks up our sleeves to help to help patients become more active. If you're in chronic pain or you're having any pain and you're not finding any solutions, find a true pain professional. The folks at Advanced Pain Care are your one-stop shop for that. At least to look at and see what the next move is. Uh, you can contact them. They're at 1901 Medi Park Drive, Building Suite, uh, Building C, Suite Two. Uh, you can also give them a call there at that location, or you can go to their website, amaryllapaindoctor.com. Start living your life again. Uh, stop withdrawing. Be a part of the grandkids and the kids' lives, and you can do it by battling pain. Dr. Lane, thank you for your time this thank morning. Thank you. Really thank you all.